Live from Africa and to the rest of the world, this is CII Radio. Independent, authentic, and dedicated to you. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. It is Yemen Jadid right here on CII Radio. It's time for us to go to the lines as we welcome our first guest of this morning, Molana Ashok Patel, who has served the technology industry for nearly three decades and currently assists with mentoring and branding of SMMEs. He has also has an interest in understanding human behavior, identifying audiences, stimulating trends, and using subtle priming techniques count. And we're talking about smartphones. A boon or a bane is a question I'm sure many find difficult to answer. With the pandemic and subsequent lockdown, we have become almost completely reliant on these devices. But are we addicted to them? And what impact do they have on our lives? Well, Anna Asha Patel recently saw his post on cell phone addiction went viral. Let's talk more about this. Assalamu alaikum, Molana, and welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum, Thanks for having me on the show. We thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Now, let's talk about the pandemic. Now, the pandemic has made us very reliant on smart devices, namely our smartphones. But we are aware that this reliance brings with a change in behavior or personality and even addiction. Tell us, what is your take on this? And is this what your post dealt with that went viral? You see, the... What's been happening with this uh, lockdown? It's uh, something that uh, we haven't experienced before. So we've had to virtually overnight change our lives and adapt to a new way of living. Some ways temporarily and uh, some ways permanently. So if this lockdown actually had to happen about 20 years ago, or the lockdown forced to have an internet access shutdown, for example, experience a very different lockdown. So. Very often, uh, when ulama gives bayans, we take, a, we take an example of, uh, of a knife. This knife can be used as a tool to prepare our food, cut material for shade or many other advantages. However, this knife can also be used to harm ourselves and or another person. So the niyat and the usage of such a tool is the important part. So the Internet is actually the same thing. During lockdown, it was used to keep in touch with family members, remote schooling, madrasa, lectures and advices sent by ulama via social media, notices of mayat, letters from Islamic organizations, um, even like this, the streaming of uh, radio stations. In fact, uh, information on COVID virus, um, which in any other ways you would not have been so informed about the COVID virus as it would be, as you would be without the Internet. So the, definitely there has been very uh, many advantages with regards to having access to the Internet in your pocket uh, over during the lockdown. However, it also been, it's also been used to uh, potentially harm our deen because bad and false news, disagreement between ulama that was made public and gone viral since, uh, hence causing confusion among the Muslims in South Africa, even the increase in online viewership of films and the other increase in social media activities and chats between like non mahrams and many other negative users of the film. So our school-going generation, they needed activity to keep themselves busy and physical and mental stimulation because they were not going to school. And the easiest way out was Internet access, whether it was via TV or via a phone, tablet, or even a gaming console such as the PS4 and the Wii and all that. So the tremendous increase in Internet usage actually affected some networks where residential Internet service providers actually had to increase their line speeds in the suburbs and that and upgrade clients' access packages. Um, you know, a lot of them had uh, limited packages, and now they had to upgrade to, like, unlimited packages of Internet. But at the same time, this whole lockdown has turned many users into addicts, something that we call the Internet addiction disorder. So Internet users need to ask themselves, do you play video games on the Internet via your phone? Do a computer or even a game console in excess? A lot of gaming. Are you compulsively shopping online? Are you always browsing on what's available uh, to purchase online? Is your credit card uh, ready in your hand to purchase and get it delivered? Uh, you can't physically stop checking your Facebook, your WhatsApp, your Instagram. Is your, is your excessive computer or mobile use interfering with your daily life? your relationships, your work, 
or even your schoolwork. So if you've answered yes to any of these questions, you may be suffering from internet addiction uh, disorder. So the thing is that just because you use the internet a lot or you watch a lot of YouTube videos or you shop online frequently or you like to check social media every time, it doesn't mean that you suffer from internet addiction disorder. The trouble comes when these activities that you're doing start interfering with your daily life and your personal life. In general, internet addiction disorder is subdivided into varying categories. The most commonly identified categories of internet addiction, it includes um, gaming. Uh, recently, the, the trend that gaming is uh, PUBG, for example. Um, social networking, constant Instagramming, uh, Facebooking, uh, WhatsApp is, you know, talking to uh, probably somebody in the same room as you over WhatsApp. Uh, email, blogging, uh, even as blogging with the selfies and uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you're cooking, everything, you, you start blogging, everything, online shopping, and even inappropriate internet photography. Which other res- When I was speaking to some uh, other researchers, they suggest that it's not the amount of time spent on the internet that's particularly troublesome. Rather, it's actually how the internet is being used and how you're using the social media for, for that. Is it in excessive? If you are very, very much excessive in it, then you've got to be worried because you have an internet addiction disorder. Now, you, you, you've spoken about the addiction disorder. Now, you know, you also mentioned about the behavior of people. Now, you mentioned also that uh, if the pandemic had to occur 20 years ago, it would be a whole different experience as it is today. Would you say that, you know, smartphones have come, come in at a, at a good time because, as you said, like a knife, you can either use it to, uh, to your own benefit or you can use it to your own danger. Would you think, uh, given the statistics and what we know to be true about cell phone usage, it would also be easy to put down and walk away? But this is easier said than done. Could you comment further on this, Molana? You see, um, if you really, really look at it uh, on the cell phone itself, especially if a cell phone gets into the hand of a um, of a child, when I say a child, I'm talking about a child between the age of 8 to about 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, even uh, late teens, like 19 years old. So actually what's, what's been happening is that, you know, there's video games that you see, whether it's on um, uh, whether it's on the phone mainly, because now they, before the video games was primarily on video consoles, and now they've put it onto the onto, on, onto the console onto the handheld, and your phone is so powerful that it can handle very very high graphics video games, and they actually can be downloaded for free on the internet, and and then they um, they charge you for whatever stages whatever it may be. So video games actually have been compared to something called Kitty Crack. And online messaging such as WhatsApp, Instagram, DM, Facebook Messenger, etc., they have actually been blamed for increasing the reach, unfortunately, the reach of childhood bullies. So they'll be uh, they, they'll be publishing things online and publishing things under the Instagram and so on. And you'll actually find that in the background they're actually being bullied by certain um, other individuals or other children. Uh, and that is what they call cyberbullying. So youth internet addiction has been identified actually also as one of the primary culprits behind the epidemic of childhood obesity. So it's not just... It doesn't just end here. It goes way beyond what we, yet we can see beyond the screen. You know, the parents do not see what this child is looking at on, on their screen, especially in the evenings and things like that. So wh- what do you do? Does, does, so what you're thinking that any good parent should actually throw away the phone and computer out and place a non-negotiable ban on any online activities and start searching uh, the storeroom for that uh, old monopoly uh, gaming or try and do whatever it may be to get the child away from the phone? Wrong. You see, you've got to, it's not teach just moderation. The, the, the telephone that you have in your hand is, can also be used for the good. So similar to the child going to the park with, uh, to play with, with other kids, you'll find in the park that there's good kids and there's bad kids, and you get the risks as well. The child can get hurt by falling or any other risk. So the secret to ensuring that your children have a healthy relationship with the Internet and video games doesn't involve outright prohibition. Rather, it means effectively managing where, what, and when 
your your children play. For example, you can switch off the Wi-Fi at say nine o'clock uh, because that is bedtime, and you must know that you know a child before he goes to sleep, you, you see the the information overload that happens onto the phone it can really damage your brain because it's. Is giving information all the time, and every time they're scrolling, for example, on Instagram, every time they're scrolling for every single post, is actually information that's going into your mind. But before you go to sleep, for example, you need to actually um, subside your mindset. You must remember that Isha Salah, for example, has 17 rakats. Isha Salah has 17 rakats for a reason, because those 17 rakats actually has to has to slow down your brain activity, and it sort of like meditate you to. To, uh, into a more uh, subtle mode, and then you can go off to sleep knowing that you know your your brain has been sort of like shutting down slowly. Now the thing is that if you're going to have these guys, uh, the children or even the adults for that matter, looking on the phone until very late at night, and that's something very common because the phone is usually um, is usually kept next to you on the bedside. So the last thing that you actually do before you go off to sleep, instead of reading maybe a uh, surah bakara or sorry a surah uh, sort of mook or your cool now you're watching your phone and you're responding to some messages and then you put it on silent and put it next to you with a with the excuse that is going to be used as a um, uh, as an alarm clock which is which is incorrect so for the children for example even for yourself switch off your wi-fi at nine o'clock which means that you know now you you've used your phone it's under moderation now it's time to sleep so start getting your family together and going to sleep you get yourself an alarm clock uh, a proper old-fashioned alarm clock where you can take your phone and leave it maybe in the kitchen or the lounge for charging so you don't have to use it as um, you know, as, as, as a uh, um, alarm clock. A lot of the time people say, oh, you know what, for emergency I'm leaving the phone behind. Hey, you know what, 365 days a year you haven't come across a single emergency. Leave it. Leave all your phones in one place where it can uh, um, a central place where it's away from you, so that before you go off to sleep, you know you can read your calls, you can you can remember Allah Taala, and then you can go off to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing before you even greet your partner, you're reaching for your phone and you're checking your messages and you're checking your Instagram, which is wrong. What you're supposed to be doing is that reading your your, your du'as, greeting your partner, waking the kids up, and you're not delaying yourself on the phone because your phone is stuck one side. Then you can, after breakfast, you can switch on the Wi-Fi, and then you can carry on with the phone. Well, now that is our time this morning. You've raised a lot of good, important facts for us to consider, especially during this time. And also, we hope that you know the children don't get too absorbed into their cell phones. That there is balance, and the parents know exactly what to do when it comes to that. Uh, any parting words for this morning, Molana? Very quickly. Well, you see, the the main thing that we need to understand is that the telephone was created as a means to improve communication. This communication does not need to impose in your life, in your duties. You have the tool of a phone, and it has to be used in the correct place, in the correct matter, manner, at the correct time. They say if you receive a visitor during a mealtime, you will more, more than likely ask him to wait in the sitting room while you complete your meal. In fact, people should know the usual meal times and avoid calling during those times. In fact, people should even know the Salah times. For example, how can one Muslim brother call another Muslim brother during Maghrib time when he, when he knows that this brother should be praying um, Salah in a masjid? And you hear all these phones ringing during Maghrib time and so on. So that's an expectation which may not materialize is not everyone thinks the same. The point is that the caller, the caller who's calling you on the phone, is not entitled for you to leave what you are doing to answer that call. You will respond to that call when it's convenient for you because your meal, your prayer, or family time is important to you. So don't let anyone, by whatever means, disturb you of this routine in your life. You will have time to answer calls. And if you adhere to these self-suiting rules, you will see that all the callers will actually know when you answer calls, and they will call during your available times. So business calls are handled during business hours. Keep it that way. Understand that you are your children's guide. So if you attend a business call during a family outing, a family dinner, or family time at home, you know, business never stops. 
Everybody wants to do business. But your family will feel that they're having their time stolen from them. So don't fall for these unfamiliar phone calls. Make sure that when you get home, your business phone is put on silent so that you don't, you don't get fall into the trap of responding to callers who are inconsiderate and in calling you for business during your family time. Mm -hmm. Alaa well, Khair for joining us once again, wishing you a great day, and we hope to chat to you again in the near future. Assalamu alaikum. That was Malala Ashraf Patel talking about smartphone devices. He had commitment to the technological era for over three decades, talking about smartphones, the pros and the cons of it, and how we should be very vigilant in how we use our smartphones as well as those around us. CII Radio, the media voice with a global footprint. Tune in now.